Ah, here you go again, Lego, recycling video topics of things you've already talked about. Well, the thing is, when it comes to this particular topic, the last time we had talked about this was a few months ago, and there's been a lot that is oddly enough changed after this, which is why I felt like it was appropriate to go out there and make the review video one year later, talking about the debate that raged on from last season and talking about where each of these guys are today. Now, as I said a few videos ago, I am currently in California, so this video that you're listening to, me talking to you on the microphone, this is being recorded on Saturday, April 22nd, which means that Game 3 between the Coachella Valley Firebirds and... Who are they playing? Okay, they are playing the Tucson Roadrunners. Game 3 has not happened yet, which means that some of the numbers, some of the statistics may not be entirely accurate, but... That is kind of just my fault, you know, that's kind of what happens when you pre-record videos. You have to pre-schedule things when you're going on a trip. But either way, we are talking about the ongoing and raging debate that started up last season and is still kind of going on today when it comes to the projected first overall pick in the 2022 NHL Entry Draft and who the Canadians ended up selecting instead. Let's talk about Shane Wright, and let's also talk about Uri Slavkovsky and go over that debate from one year ago and where things are today. Now, if you're a brand new hockey fan, you haven't been around for too long, you might not have remembered just how big of a deal this entire thing was, but I think most of us can remember just as far back as a year ago that, hey, the big raging debate for the Montreal Canadiens after they won the draft lottery was a pretty simple question. Who are they going to take? The guy who was projected to being first overall in 2022 ever since he was 16 years old and Shane Wright? or a player in Uri Slavkovsky who had a much better international showcase, who is bigger, stronger, and a lot more of a different kind of player than Wright. You had the debates raging on for most of 21-22, and a lot of people said, hey, you can't really go wrong here, because for Uri Slavkovsky, if he pans out, this guy could be just a really unique type of power-forward, two-way capable guy who has some really good offensive potential. If he's really able to maximize on the tools that he has, Uri Slavkovsky could be an unstoppable force out there, and you really can't predict how high of a ceiling he actually has. For Shane Wright, there was always that two-way center offensive-leaning guy that people were expecting him to become. There was no doubt amongst the minds of many NHL fans and analysts, he should have been an NHL player at 18 years old, and he probably should have been given a pretty significant role. The World Juniors, both of them by the way, as well as all the other showcases he has had in the OHL's regular season, as a member of the Kingston Frontenacs, there was just such a mature and poised resume of talent there that made Shane Wright project to being that number one caliber center down the line. However, we all kind of know how things went. The Canadians went with the big guy, Yuri Slavkovsky first overall, and Wright didn't even go second. The Devils already had Jack Hughes and Nico Hishier, so they didn't really need another center. They took Simon Nimich. And the Arizona Coyotes already spent so much time scouting their guy, Logan Cooley, at number three that they decided, hey, let's just take Cooley. We didn't really do too much homework on Shane Wright. So that ended up being their pick at number three. Wright slipped all the way to four where he was taken by the Seattle Kraken. There were further complications when you talk about Shane Wright eyeing down the Canadian's table and him conversing with his dad about all this stuff and him dropping in the draft order, but long story short, Wright versus Slavkovsky was the ongoing debate that was inevitably settled when the Canadians took Slavkovsky first overall. One year later, though, things are honestly a little bit more stagnant than we would have predicted them to being in regards to both of these players and their development and progression. This is because for Yuri Slavkovsky, we already talked about this, but the guy played such a limited sample in the NHL, only 39 games played, that it's really difficult to try to evaluate properly what grew in Slavkovsky's game from one year ago to today. There were health complications in there, there were head-up issues in there too, the guy would always be caught with his head down. He was getting bodied and absolutely leveled out by guys like Marco Rossi, who's only 5'9", for example. And even though Yuri Slavkovsky displayed the level of physical maturity and awareness to stick around in the NHL and still be an okay player, there wasn't that X factor just yet. Sure, he was only 18, but first overall picks, especially guys in the past like McDavid and Matthews and 
Rasmus Dahlin, these guys have kind of tainted our expectations into thinking that first overall picks are supposed to be immediate game-changing type of guys. Slavkovsky, at 18 years old, just unfortunately was not that. We made the video a few weeks ago talking about Yuri Slavkovsky's vow to come back in 2023-2024 as a stronger, more mature player who expands more so on the tools that he has. And while that's all fine and dandy, we just gotta wait a little bit until we're able to see that come to fruition. To end off the season, the guy had 39 games and only 10 points. So really, it's not like Slavkovsky was the most biggest, baddest, game-changing type of player like some first overall picks had been in the past. But the reason I say this debate between Wright and Slavkovsky wasn't really all too progressive either way is because Shane Wright had his own growing pains. We'd made a ton of videos about this, but the guy didn't get much NHL time. He only had eight games played, and in that sample he had two points. This was mostly so that the Seattle Kraken wouldn't have to burn off a year on his ELC, but they had to go through a lot of scratching and a lot of time off with this guy in order to accomplish that. They played him a little bit in the NHL, he scored his first NHL goal against the Canadiens, but then they sat him out. They sat him out for a long enough amount of time that he was able to get sent down to the AHL, even though that's normally not the progression that you see CHL athletes into the NHL take at 18 years old. He played in the AHL for the stint that he was allowed to play in, he went back up to Seattle, was sent away for the World Juniors, dominated over there, went back over to the Kraken, and then got sent to the OHL, where the Kingston Frontenacs traded him over to the Windsor Spitfires. He had suited up for that team in the regular season and in the playoffs. He had three points in four games played, eliminated, by the way, by Philip Meshar and the Kitchener Rangers. And then Shane Wright was sent over to the Coachella Valley Firebirds once again in the AHL to help out in their postseason run. The reason I had that disclaimer at the beginning is because at the time of me recording this audio, the series between Coachella Valley and Tucson is tied 1-1, Shane Wright has zero points in the two games played, and game three is gonna be tomorrow for me, but it was a few days ago for you. That game's played number should be at three right now, and there should be either zero amount of points or however many amount of points Wright was able to get in game number three. But either way, the guy's progression was so up and down and so strange that it's difficult to really say with any certainty that he is a significantly better player today than he was a year ago, and especially so when you try to compare that to the progression that Yuri Slavkovsky had as well. I feel like if the race last year was super tight, it's still super tight, because Slavkovsky only played half the year, and Shane Wright only had eight NHL games. Sure, he looked good at the World Juniors, but if Slavkovsky was able to play at the World Juniors, he probably would have looked good too. That Slovak team was really good regardless as to whether or not they had Slavkovsky, and if they just had Uri on their squad, they probably would have been much better. Add to this the AHL stint as well as the return to the OHL, and it's really difficult to try to justifiably say that Wright progressed further than Uri did in 22-23. I feel like this entire debate is going to rage on for such a long time that we're going to have to wait until 2024 at the very least to start determining winners and losers, whether or not the Canadians made the right choice in drafting Slavkovsky over Wright, or if it would have been better for them to try to go for Wright instead. But either way, this has been our one year later review on Uri Slavkovsky versus Shane Wright. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Do you think I missed out on anything? Any other aspects to this conversation you think are worth talking about? Let me know in the comments what are your opinions about Slavkovsky and the way he played in 22-23. Also, let me know your thoughts about Shane Wright and the weird progression, the season that he had. From the NHL to the AHL to the World Juniors to the OHL back to the AHL and not getting too much of a cup of coffee at the National Hockey League in between. Do you think that was the right way to go? Do you think it's all worth it to save a year on that ELC? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And... Bye.